How much power do you suppose an engine this size might deliver? Or one this size? Or this size? It seems reasonable that large engines deliver more power than small ones, but how much more? Can we make a simple calculation to estimate an engine's power given its size? The formula for indicated power is a good place to start. An engine's indicated power is cylinder pressure, P, times piston stroke, L, times cylinder bore area, A, times engine speed, N. Let's call this plan. We can use plan to predict the indicated power of the little baseline engine we'll be discussing throughout the series. An engine with 3 8 inch bore, 1 half inch stroke, typically operating at 10 psi, and here at 1200 rpm. At these conditions, its indicated power is, hold your breath, a little less than two thousandths of a horsepower. Not much, but a power we can conveniently measure on the bench. This double scale version of the baseline engine indicates over a hundredth horsepower. Still not much, but eight times the power of the baseline at the same pressure and speed, and leading to some more robust test equipment to measure power on the bench. Now, going almost to the ridiculous, this half scale version of the baseline engine indicates only a minuscule two ten thousandths of a horsepower one-eighth of the power of the baseline. This is getting to the point where instrumentation to measure power becomes more difficult. Notice that the predicted power scales as the cube of the dimensional scale factor. Doubling the dimensions of an engine, doubling the bore and stroke, increases predicted power by a factor of eight, the cube of the two-fold scale factor. Already we can see a motivation for picking such a small baseline engine. It's sort of the Goldilocks size for simple testing. The baseline engine lifts a one pound weight, a reasonable distance, and a reasonable time at about peak power. At peak power, the double scale engine would have to lift eight pounds, the total shown here, the same distance at the same time for a proper comparison of engine performance. Now let's dig a little deeper into plan. An engine's power increases directly as its stroke times the cylinder bore area. LA represents the volume swept by the piston during an engine's power stroke. This volume is the engine's displacement. So, power increases directly as the engine's displacement. Doubling an engine's displacement doubles its power, all else equal. Initially, we ask how an engine's size affects its power. But what do we mean by size? If we double the dimensions of an engine, do we double its size? Depends upon what we mean by size. This summary of engine scaling illustrates several things we might mean by size. If we double the engine's dimensions, we double the engine's bore and stroke. But this increases the cylinder bore area by a factor of four, the square of the bore scaling. So twice the stroke, L, times four times the area, A, increases the displacement, LA, by a factor of eight, the cube of the scale factor. Displacement is a measure of volume, and we might specify an engine's displacement in units of cubic inches, cubic centimeters, liters, or any other measure of volume. The same scaling applies to the overall engine volume and weight, assuming accurate scaling and the same materials when considering weight. So, doubling the size of an engine might mean doubling its dimensions. This would increase the engine's displacement, power, volume, and weight by a factor of eight. Or it might mean doubling its displacement. This would mean increasing its dimensional scale by a factor of 1.26, increasing the dimensions by 26%, the cube root of the twofold displacement increase. This would double the power, volume, and weight of the engine. But if larger engines produce more power, why does this relatively small Porter Allen engine deliver the same power as this coreless monster? plan gives us the answer. While the Porter Allen's displacement is only one quarter of the coreless displacement, the Porter Allen runs at four times the coreless speed. The coreless wins by a factor of four in displacement, but loses by the same factor in speed. The net result is the same power, assuming that the pressure is the same. That's great. All we have to do is increase an engine's speed to increase its power. Well, not quite. 
It turns out that for a given engine design, increasing the engine's speed decreases the P in plan. There's a limit to practical engine speed. I should probably qualify this by saying that this is for constant inlet and exhaust plumbing and port dimensions. Increasing speed increases the pressure drop across these passages, decreasing effective pressure. But once an engine's dimensions are established, this relationship is generally true. It gets even more complicated. While we're interested in indicated power, delivered power is our real concern. Delivered power is indicated power minus friction losses. It turns out that friction losses for a reciprocating engine are speed dependent as well, and increasing speed generally increases friction losses, decreasing delivered power. But it's not over yet. The P in plan is the MEP, the mean effective pressure during an engine cycle. MEP is the average cylinder pressure which produces useful work over an engine cycle. MEP is always lower than supply pressure and sometimes much lower. Decreasing MEP decreases engine power for a given displacement and speed. There's another factor beyond speed that can have dramatic impact upon MEP, and it's a factor that's often variable during engine operation. This factor is admission cutoff. For variable cutoff engines, MEP is sensitive to cutoff timing. Early admission cutoff means closing the inlet valve somewhere before reaching bottom dead center. Once the inlet valve closes, the cylinder gas expands, with pressure decreasing the more the gas expands. Variable cutoff is used primarily to control engine efficiency, and efficiency determines the fuel cost of running the engine. Note that plan determines engine indicated power. This is the power generated by the gas in the cylinder as it drives the piston. The term indicated comes from the name of an instrument, an engine indicator originally a mechanical device that was connected to a steam engine to monitor its performance. An engine indicator generates an engine indicator diagram. This is a typical engine indicator diagram, in this case for a Porter Allen engine with early admission cutoff. Piston stroke is on the horizontal axis and cylinder pressure is on the vertical axis. Inlet cutoff occurs at about the point illustrated in this example, quite early in the total stroke. The area between the red inlet curve and the blue exhaust curve is proportional to MEP. The green shading illustrates this area. Constructing a rectangular area equal to the area between the curves, we see that for this indicator diagram, MEP is only about 18% of supply pressure. The bad news is that this early cutoff in low MEP significantly decreases engine power. It's much less than the power that could be generated with this displacement, but no cutoff. In this case, about one-fifth of the maximum potential power. The good news is that this operating point is very efficient for high supply pressure. For a stationary engine such as this, the engine size and weight resulting from the large displacement is less important than the reduced fuel consumption over the engine's lifetime that results from the high efficiency. The engine must just be sized to provide the required power, considering the early cutoff and low MEP. So, plan looks simple. There's a lot of detail buried under the hood.